This is how Satan operates. Are you interested in that? This is how he operates. He directs our attention towards a need or desire. That's the way he always gets in. He starts out with that. For example, here's Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Everything is absolutely perfect. Could not be better. They have everything. They have each other. Everything is perfect. The one thing that they didn't have is fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Look at everything else is perfect. And so what does Satan do? He points them to the one thing they don't have. How many men and women point to some other person lustfully because they have everything else in life they need but him or her? And how many decisions are made, not because people don't have certain things, but they don't have a particular one? Satan is a liar. Satan is a deceiver. And one of the first things he does is to point out something in your life that you don't have. He does not remind you of how much you do have, how blessed you are, how healthy you are, what you drive, where you live, what you wear, he points out the one thing you don't have. What about, suppose you had that. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. And he uses the same tactics he used in the garden. You'd think by now we'd have caught on. <laughs> How does he operate? He points out the thing you don't have. So that if you want to be complete, you'll have it. Did it satisfy her? No. And it doesn't satisfy people today. He creates this desire in order to get people off base, off track. If you only had that, listen carefully, you can't ever have enough of anything that is not the will of God for your life to ever make you happy, ever make you feel complete, but ever make you feel content. You'll just go from one thing to the other, believing one lie after the other, and you find yourself in self-destruction. One, one of his tactics, get our attention on something we think we need. The second one is this. Watch this carefully. Satan chooses his timing. He knows when we're the most vulnerable. When Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, what did the, what did the devil say to him? Oh, I've been fasting, glorifying the Father. Well, all you have to do is turn that stone uh, into a piece of bread, and you, you'll be satisfied, which would have been a violation of the Father's will and purpose and plan for his life. And so the devil does the same thing. That is, he knows the timing in our life. And so when you get hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you're vulnerable. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Think about it. H-A-L-T. Remember that. Halt. When you, when you start feeling hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, H-A-L-T. Stop and think. I am now vulnerable to a satanic attack. Did you get that? A satanic attack is an attack by Satan in one of those areas of your life where you're the most vulnerable. When you get hungry, how do you feel? When you get angry, how do you feel? When you're lonely, how do you feel? And when you're tired and worn out? We're the most vulnerable, and that's when Satan will attack. He knows exactly when to attack us, how to attack us. He knows our weakest points. Everybody has a weakness, at least one or more. That's the way he operates. A third thing he does is this. He creates doubt in our mind. This book from Genesis to Revelation is the word of the living God. It's all true, not part true, all true. The devil will attack you in those areas that you are the weakest. And he creates doubt in our minds. And so what I've noticed is when I've talked to people who are really under temptation about something, it's amazing how they can bring up other scriptures that have nothing to do with that and try to interpret that verse of Scripture to say, well, nobody's perfect and 
you know, he had this problem, she had that problem, and, and so what happens? The next thing you know, they've rationalized themselves right into sin. That's his tactic, to create doubt in your mind. So if I should ask you, do you believe the Word of God, what would you say? Yes. Well, do you believe all of it? Yes. You mean you believe all the Word of God? Yes. Well, what about this one? My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You believe that? Yes. Well, why do you sin to get your needs met? Listen, the devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. He will cheat you, deceive you any way he can to get you to follow him rather than Jesus. And so, if he can create doubt in your mind about the Word of God, that's a dangerous doubt. If he can create a doubt in your mind about his Word, he, listen, he doesn't have a toehold. He's got a stronghold and a grip in your life. Because when you get tempted, here's what you'll do. You'll say, well, I believe, I believe the Bible, but some of it's not relevant. Which part is that? Or, this is it. That's just your interpretation. Well, let me ask you this. How do you interpret, thou shalt not steal? Thou shalt not kill? Thou shalt not commit adultery? Thou shalt not bear false witness? How, how do you interpret those? There's only one way to interpret. Thou shalt not do it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very simple, is it? <laughs> very simple. And yet I've, I've seen people come and say, well, that's your interpretation. Well, how, what's the interpretation of thou shalt not? And what I want to say is you shall not doubt the Word of God. Th this is how Satan operates. He works on our desires. He works on our spots that are most vulnerable creates doubt in our mind. And then he loves this. He wants to get us in a debate. And to debate with him is disastrous. Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Here's, here's what the Father has said. When somebody wants to debate with you about what's right and wrong, just give them God's Word. You say, well, I don't know God's Word. That's why you need to be reading God's Word. You can't, you can't just come to church and listen to a sermon once in a while and think you're fit to deal with the devil. Listen, you're not fit to deal with the devil unless you know the Word of God. It doesn't mean that you have to know all of it, but listen, you can deal with him if you know the basics. Thou shalt not. And when you, listen, when you start trying to re-reason, thou shalt not, to say, well, thou should not. That's not what it says. Thou, should, thou shalt not. Now, is God trying to keep us from something good? No. He's trying to keep us from self-destruction. And so what does Satan do? He wants to engage us in a, in a debate, and, and Jesus simply said, it is written. That settles it. Here's what the Father said.